Andrew, we're so glad that you could join us. Andy tried to speak, but feathers tumbled from his mouth instead of air. He had something he very much wanted to say. He wanted to say, what the hell is this? Where the hell am I? And who the hell are you? The words were there in his head, as sharp as swords, but some creature in the passageway between his brain and his tongue seized those words and made them into feathers. And the feathers fell to the ground, much faster than feathers should. And, ever so stubborn, Andy remained airborne. Andrew, we need your help. The feather mouth was a mouth made of feathers, and it was fifty foot wide. It hung in the sky like it owned the place. When it spoke, words came out, all nice and invisible as they should be. Andy envied feather mouth. That was the overriding emotion. Not fear, not awe, not distress, or disgust, but envy. Andrew, we're so very close now. So very close to completion. This was a dream, of course. Of course, this was a dream. Dream this was of a course. Was this course of a dream? We're sorry to have to ask you, Andrew. Feathermouth bit its lip. It was impossible to see what the tooth was made of. It appeared to be pure light. Whatever else, thought Andy, a mouth made of feathers, teeth made of light, whatever else. But we spun the dial and it landed upon Mr. Andrew Baxter of 43 Elgar Street, Bolton. And here we are. Andy thought of his home on Elgar Street. He thought of his bedroom and his bed within. He thought of himself within that bed and tried to urge his mind to return there. For this was surely a dream. A dream this was, for surely. We've arrived at it, Andrew. The final dream. Far, far below, the feathers from Andy's mouth crushed a village. Let me explain. When your kind were placed here, it proved impossible to keep you weighted down. You kept floating off and burning up in the atmosphere. Those were difficult days. Andy closed his eyes. He did not want to hear this. If there was one thing that turned Andy's stomach, it was creation stories. Deities, big bangs, celestial conflicts, he'd had his fill. He tried to reach up to block his ears, but his arms were too busy keeping him in flight. And so we appealed to our masters, and they granted us a certain number of dreams to help keep you all weighted down on terra firma. Andy vomited. The feathers rained destruction. But there were limited supplies. Times are tight, Andrew, I'm sure you understand. Andy opened his eyes. The feather mouth was trying to smile. We've appealed for more, but I'm afraid that's it. We've reached the end, and we've plucked you out. Andrew, Robert, Isaac, Baxter, to dream the final dream. It will be delivered to you tomorrow night. Tomorrow? Andy wanted to say. But it's my birthday, my fortieth. We only ask that you spend the day preparing your fellows for what's about to come. Tell them we're sorry. 
but that they had a jolly good run and should, on balance, feel rather proud of themselves. I've seen that you're on Twitter. You should be able to reach the rest of the world before it all has to end. Well, Andy's birthday was a happy one. Across the world, people felt a lightness they rarely experienced. Hatchets were buried, ceasefires were called, and old friends reached out to reconnect. Animals were not slaughtered. Shops gave out their wares for free. People made love. Prison doors were unlocked, just for 24 hours. Some people came to visit Andy. He would not come out of his house. Every time he tried to speak, uh, his throat would tickle as if he'd swallowed a wing. He composed a tweet instead, a parting Feathermouth's message. And just as the sun dipped below the horizon, he sent it. He did not fight the urge to sleep. He got as comfy as possible and opened up his mind. And as the dream poured in and filled him through, he felt the weight of it. Drive him down, down, down to the ground. He sank through his sheets, through his mattress, through the floorboards, through the dirt, the earth, the mud, the clay, on down through the rock, through the molten core, all the way to the center. And when the dream ended, his eyes fluttered open, and he started to float back up.